candidates to become San Diego's next mayor hit the campaign trails ahead of Election Day. The legal action President Trump could take if he loses the election. Businesses and government offices nationwide board up their doors and windows in the event of unrest after the election. More F grades for Carlsbad Unified students why some say distance learning is to blame. The release of California halibut back into the wild. And meet the Fallbrook family that created a COVID card game. It's, it's contagious. contagious! News 8 starts right now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. We are just hours away from an election day like no other in our history. Tonight, government offices and businesses in cities nationwide, including here in San Diego, are boarding up doors and windows in the event of protests, even riots. This is the first election ever to be held during a pandemic, and polling locations have already been operating here since Saturday. President Trump and Joe Biden are using the last day before the election to make their final push to voters. Natalie Brand has more from the White House tonight. On the eve of Election Day, President Trump and Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden are hitting the campaign trail in five crucial states. Get out and vote. The president makes the most campaign stops with five rallies. With your vote, we will continue to cut your taxes, cut regulations, support our police, support our great military, protect our Second Amendment. Biden kicked off the day with a last minute stop in Cleveland, Ohio. Tomorrow we have an opportunity to put an end to a presidency that's divided this nation. The fight for Pennsylvania is dominating both campaigns final hours ahead of Tuesday's election with all four candidates fanning out across the Commonwealth. Pennsylvania will determine who will be the next president of the United States. The road to victory goes right through the Keystone State. Biden surprised college students at the University of Pittsburgh with a visit from Lady Gaga, who is joining him as he campaigns in the Steel City this evening. It's time for Donald Trump to pack his bags and go home. Go home. Former President Barack Obama is pushing to get out last minute voters in Atlanta, Georgia and Miami, Florida, two states where the black vote could be key to a Biden victory. Florida, you delivered for me twice. And now I'm asking you to deliver for all of us. More than 96 million Americans have already cast early ballots, and a recent CBS News poll shows Biden has an edge with early voters, though the vast majority of the president's supporters are expected to come out on Election Day. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. If you still haven't voted, the time is now to make a plan for tomorrow. The polls will be open from 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. at the registrar's office in Kearney Mesa and 235 super polling locations. Officials say you should be prepared for long lines and, of course, wear a mask. However, they say no voters will be turned away. If we see a person not wearing the mask, if a person is not feeling well, we'll ask those individually to vote outside, which is socially distanced from everyone else inside the voting area. If you haven't registered to vote, you can still do that, too, you, to cast a provisional ballot. For more information on how that process works and for all the answers to your voting questions, just go to cbs8.com slash vote. San Diego will also be deciding its next mayor tomorrow. The most recent polls show a close race between Barbara Bree and Todd Gloria, with as many as a third of San Diegans still undecided. News 8's Brandon Lewis has more tonight on their final push to voters. Now, Carlo and Barbara Lee, both candidates were out bright and early trying to convince San Diegans to vote their way. Barbara Bree held a number of events in different neighborhoods. Meanwhile, Todd Gloria spent the day hitting the phone and text bank. Barbara's the first mayor that we've really come to know. Barbara Bree and her supporters hit the campaign trail early at the popular hiking trail up Cowles Mountain. Yes. And that's a priority and we should have Barbara to have Bree it waiting. Bree is calling herself an independent Democrat after entering politics four years ago as a city council member from La Jolla. I'm running for mayor to bring accountability and transparency to City Hall to make sure that our neighborhoods, our residents are our priority and not the special interests who are spending $1.4 million to defeat me. 
While Bree did broad outreach, her opponent, Assemblyman Todd Gloria, took a narrower approach, calling and texting voters who records show haven't yet cast their ballot. Yeah, this is Todd Gloria calling. I'm a candidate for mayor of San Diego. He was joined by Governor Gavin Newsom and local legislators who endorsed his campaign. You have an opportunity to elect an extraordinary leader that's going to develop partnerships, the likes of which San Diego hasn't seen in decades. Trust me, you want to address the issue of homeless head on, get Todd Glory as your next mayor. While the position is officially nonpartisan, this is the first November mayor's race featuring two Democrats. That's because of the jungle primary that eliminated candidates like Republican Scott Sherman, who announced he's backing Gloria over the weekend and wrote a scathing rebuke of Bree, who was recently backed herself by the granddaughter of Cesar Chavez. To have true partnership between San Diego and our state capital, it means so much to me and to all of our volunteers who you're helping to fire up. Aren't we fortunate to have a governor that not only gets it, but gets us? You have a clear choice voters tomorrow or today or whenever you're voting between an independent Democrat who is not beholden to the special interests or someone who will answer to the millions of dollars of special interests that have been spent in this election. Both campaigns say they will continue their events all the way until 8 o'clock tomorrow when the polls close. Carlo and Barbara Lee. Thank you, Brandon. Probably the most closely watched and hotly contested local congressional race is the showdown between former 49th District Congressman Daryl Issa and Omar Kampanajar for the 50th District seat. We're going to have more on that coming up in our next half hour. President Trump has already threatened to take legal action in crucial battleground states like Pennsylvania when it comes to counting the vote after Election Day. But what happens if he loses the election? Are we in for a messy post-election courtroom struggle? News 8's Kelly Hassadal spoke to a political expert from UC San Diego. Well, both sides have large teams of lawyers ready to go. Some experts say any post-election lawsuits will come down to how close the election is on November 3rd. The courts have already ruled on a lot of election law cases. UC San Diego political professor Thad Kowser says the courts have made it clear about where they stand when it comes to throwing out mail-in ballots over unsubstantiated claims of voter fraud. Courts have not had any sympathy for that argument, and they have ruled against that argument. So if President Trump tries to declare victory on election night based only on the, the counts of in-person votes and tries to throw out or rule out the, the legitimately cast ballots received on time through the mail, I don't think any court is going gonna, is gonna to rule in his favor. However, Professor Kowser says legal battles within battleground states are certainly possible. If we see some nail-bitingly close elections in key states. So again, Pennsylvania, uh, that's a place where there's a currently ongoing suit that the Supreme Court deadlocked 4-4 on about what happens if ballots arrive, which is now allowed after election day, but are sent before election day, will they be counted? That's something that could come into, into play if this election, if by Friday we learn that there's still a razor thin, you know, 0.1, 0.2% margin. Kowser believes it's likely we will know who won the election by the end of the week. What would have to happen to make things stretch on longer than that? There would have to be some new controversy that arrives. Um, you know, just huge numbers of in-person voters are not able to cast ballots in some states. Or he says the polls are off by a larger margin than the 2016 election, and the race ends up much tighter in key states like Michigan. By far the most likely scenario is that the, the millions and millions of Americans who, are, who, are, who have been voting over the past month and will cast their ballots on Tuesday, will decide this election. Kelly Hesedal, News 8. Please join us for complete election coverage. A special edition of News 8 begins at 3 tomorrow afternoon, and that's followed by the CBS Evening News at 3.30. And then at 4 until 11 p.m. on CBS 8, it's CBS 2020, America Decides. We'll have full coverage on News 8 at 10 on the CW San Diego, and a special one-hour edition of News 8 at 11 p.m. will air right here on CBS 8. In Austria, police say two people died in a shooting and several were injured after a synagogue was reportedly attacked in the capital city of Vienna. Officials say one of the attackers has been killed and the other could still be on the run. The chancellor of Austria calls it a terror attack and that the possibility of it being an anti-Semitic attack is not being ruled out. The incident took place in the city center and public transit was shut down for some time.
The number of new COVID cases is down for a third straight day after spiking late last week. Tonight, county health officials are reporting 307 new cases. That's about 3% positive out of more than 10,000 tests taken. No new deaths were reported today, which is typical coming out of the weekend. That total remains at 891. San Diego County remains in the red tier. This week, state officials will update our case rate and positivity numbers on Wednesday due to the election day tomorrow. In the meantime, tonight, the Escondido Union School District says that three people within the Mission Middle School community have tested positive for COVID-19. That's according to the district. The transmission apparently happened off campus, but all activities at Mission Middle School are suspended through November 16th. It's not clear if the three people in question are adults or children. Distance learning has been a huge struggle for many families, and now a new report card from the Carlsbad Unified School District is shedding some light on how it's impacting grades for middle and high schoolers. It shows a 300% increase in F grades compared to last year. Shannon Handy has more in this Learning Curve report. These progress reports represent eight weeks of distance learning. The district says they're not final report cards. Still, some families point to a big problem. It doesn't surprise me. When it comes to distance learning, Sharon McKeeman says her two high schoolers are struggling. One more so emotionally, the other when it comes to his grades. The hands-on classes he really excels in. However, distance learning, he has just not been able whatsoever to engage in that online format. And so he's got mostly Fs right now. Sharon isn't alone. According to the Carlsbad Unified School District, after eight weeks of distance learning for middle and high schoolers, there are fewer A and B grades compared to last year. A grades are down nearly five percentage points. F grades have gone from 787 last year to 3,239 this year, an increase of over 300 percent. We don't blame the teachers for that. It's just it's kind of the the problems with remote learning. Scott Davison with Carlsbad Families for Reopening Schools attributes the failing grades to a variety of factors, including issues with technology and figuring out where to turn assignments in. There's too many hiccups, there's too many issues with technology and with logging in to, you know, attend and to figuring out, you know, where you need to turn in your assignments and all those types of things, and it's just not a good format for learning. And it's not just the older kids. Rachel Munoz's son is in the third grade. He's having a tough time as well. It's caused a lot of, like, mental breakdowns, at, even at eight years old. Our son, who is an IEP student who needs a ton of extra help, he gets counseling and therapy through the school. He gets all these things to the school when school's in process. And all of that's taken away from mom. He doesn't have mom and dad at home because we both work full time away from the house and he's missing assignments. She worries the longer distance learning goes on, the worse this problem will be. As of right now, schools won't reopen to all grade levels until January. We reach out to the district for comment, but have not heard back. It's going to create a hate for school. Kids are going to start hating school. A request was also made for elementary school grades. Those have not been released. The board's next meeting is scheduled for November 18th. Thanks, Shannon. You know, it's tough for a lot of those kids, their parents, and people in college, too. It, it's every level. I've got a senior this year, and it's not easy. I it's have going. all the empathy in the world for you and everybody else dealing with this. It is not an easy time. San Diego County is in relatively good shape, but COVID-19 numbers continue to spike nationwide. COVID cases reach a sobering milestone. I'm Naomi Ruckham with the areas taking the hardest hit. For tonight, we're going to see some dense fog right along the coast. Also talking about temperatures a little bit cooler by tomorrow before they warm up yet again by the middle of the week. But a massive cool down is on the way for the weekend and even a chance for some rain. All those details ahead. But first, a three-year-old girl has been rescued from the rubble days after a deadly earthquake struck Turkey.